Hello and welcome guys this is the story of you episode 2 again i know you, all of you have been waiting with bated breath for it i mean i've been kind of delayed it's it's coming after like a month but but it's finally here uh it's it's a podcast called the story of you and the core idea behind this is that we invite people to uh, tell us about their life story and the core premise is that every every life story if honestly expressed and and adequately like heard this is deeply interesting and and i have with me a very very interesting person that i'm really really excited to talk to it's it's going to be great fun uh so without further ado let me introduce uh yunlu <laughs> you said the uh, expectation too high <laughs> <laughs> no 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 um so so yunlu is 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 a friend of mine i've known her for a little over 2 years now uh we kind of got to know each other in the context of work but we've uh, become uh, fairly uh, close friends if i if i if i may say so and and she's uh, a of a fantastic person for for various reasons uh, uh like she's she's got this very like calm and like demure exterior with like this very nice warm personality but inside that <laughs> you know uh, exterior hides a very very uh, sharp kind and very deep and insightful mind and uh, and i've got to know that over time once you kind of get to see her a little bit uh, in in the moments uh, that uh, that would typically not uh, not be on display uh, but 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 we hope to in this conversation prod in a little bit further and 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 get to know her so welcome uh, yunlu to the podcast i'm i'm really uh, happy uh, to have you here thank you so much for having me and i feel i know a little better of myself from your description description previously <laughs> i didn't think myself this way <laughs> uh, there there that's that that's very it's very classic statement uh, from you <laughs> where it's like oh okay. yeah i mean i mean like yeah obviously like i am all the things that you're saying but you know because i'm also modest i didn't know of myself this way <laughs> <laughs> so uh yunlu you uh, you grew up in china and uh, and moved to the us and we kind of went to the same school even though we weren't there at the same time and we didn't realize it back then and then we oh oh yes you you you're wearing the jersey and 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 we met while we were at work and and our paths kind of int- intermingled a bit uh tell us uh, tell us about your first memory tell us what uh, growing up in china was like then there comes the little room i grew up in which was by a river and so, my grandparents who raised uh, me when i oh was wow. super young oh wow i i actually didn't know that about you that you were raised by your grandparents in the first few years yes oh wow that's that's very interesting do you have like uh, like any memories of that time i need to think and they will pop up when i continue dating <laughs> because i don't reflect on those very often no i mean it makes sense nobody does but uh, but that's very interesting i mean i almost feel like you were like painting like this beautiful picture there that oh like this is house by the river which is very rustic and like you're like kind of being uh, raised raised by your grandparents it's it's kind of interesting uh, because i feel like uh, I, i mean i don't really have that many like growing up memories of my uh, grandparents with me so much cuz they were like not living uh, with me but there's always mm-hmm. this kind of element that i talk to people about who have had that sort of influence growing up with grandparents and this tend to have uh, like a, a certain different perspective towards it what do you how do you think that kind of uh, affected you like cuz uh like a, a parent relationship is kind of different from like a grandparent relationship and how, how do you think that affected you growing up i guess i was more spoiled <laughs> 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 nothing nothing like i know you in real life but but that's interesting right that's what they say that grandparents like typically uh spoil you 
more more than your parents who, who was more strict your grandparents or your parents definitely my, my parents and my father no <laughs> doubt <laughs> no doubt nice nice do, do you think uh, there was like uh, something about uh, your grandparents kind of raising you that uh, stayed with you or like affected you in a way that uh, that morphed you growing up um speaking of that i have been thinking about whether asking my parents to help with my child in the future ah and my it's not about my um uh, memory about my grandparents just i want them to have i want my parents to have more freedom in their senior life mm. so i decided to limit their time as much as possible to themselves but not not let them to contribute as much time to my own child which is my responsibility that's how i felt <laughs> that's that's such an interesting thing actually because it's almost like this weird balance right you don't want to burden them with the responsibility because it feels like hey like you know you've been working like 50 60 years you obviously deserve like the last yeah 10 20 years to be something that is free of stress free of responsibilities but also i guess i don't know if since you grew up with your grandparents it's like oh i actually also want my kids to kind of know you or i want you to kind of know the kids and it's this uh, weird weird thing like did did you bring it up with them like how did they respond I never talked about it with them. I don't know how they would respond to this. Huh. But that's interesting. But I mean, okay, go I'm ahead. I just think contempt- contemplating about the idea in my own mind. And this the first time I talk about it with someone else. <laughs> Thanks. I, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you sharing it. But that's uh but that's so interesting, right? Cuz I almost feel like uh, parents and children have this weird relationship where they're always trying to do what's what they think is good for the other but part of the conflict I feel in this relationship is that sometimes you try to do what you think is good for the other but they might think that it's not necessarily good for me why you're doing this sort of a thing that's very feel... sharp and very accurate <laughs> do, by all do... means <laughs> did did you feel some of that uh it happens all the time <laughs> me and my parents and and uh, and who does it more or or who wins more maybe they won in the past <laughs> because they what do you call it but i i'm pretty sure i will win over <laughs> from now <laughs> that's uh, that's such a crazy thing to say cuz i remember the last time we were talking uh you know and and this is something that i wanted to go in, in into a bit further in our conversation about like how uh you've kind of felt this burden of being like you know the good responsible kid who like child who like listens to them and like uh, uh like follows expectations a little bit and i i suppose that's uh whether it's interesting to hear you say that oh I'm winning from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually what do you uh what, what I mean a couple of questions one is that what caused that shift where you were like okay like they they were winning earlier and 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 now I'm going to win that a little bit more or also just um how how did that kind of manifest because uh I mean from what I understand Indian and Chinese cultures are kind of similar and there's like this pressure on kids to be obedient to parents and uh, and I'm sure you kind of and then from what you've told me you felt that uh, pressure as as well like how 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 did you think it affected you kind of in your life positively and negatively how do you deal with it uh first i want to clarify that i by winning i mean probably in the future i will take more planning of their life so i got a better chance of uh planning for something that in my mind is good for them mm. and that's why i said maybe i will win in the future <laughs> it's such a sweet thing to say 
<laughs> yeah, and in terms of that cultural thing, I think I spend a long time trying to learn how to say no to people because I'm not used to say no to my parents. Mm. I've always been trying hard to live to their expectation and use their expectation to shape myself mm. to a certain extent. Mm. That's that's so fascinating, right? It's and and there's like so much kind of uh, nuance there, right? Almost because I feel like uh, in some way, like parents try to kind of shape us. Uh, so that they feel like, hey, like I can protect this person and they won't have the problems that I faced. Mm -hmm. But also, like, our ex every person's experience is different and their life is different. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you know, that's so true about the thing that you said about, like, learning how to say no. Because, I mean, again, like, I feel like it's true for a lot of Indians and Chinese kids because of... <laughs> Now that I've interacted with with a lot of like Chinese folks, I feel like there's so many similarities in our culture, where it's like you have to you, there's a guilt to saying no, right? Yes, short answer is yes. <laughs> but but it's fascinating to me that like you kind of manage to learn uh, learn learn a way around it. Like how how did how do you think you got uh, kind of better at that? Many things. Um, first, the distance helped because now we don't live together. We live different life. We are in quite different world. So I realized their expectation or experience or advice just don't apply anymore. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out things on my own. And mm -hmm. they are no longer the source of truth for my life. That's one thing. Mm, that makes so, sense. So distance both in both physically and in time, I guess. Mm. And, that's, that's interesting. And also all the painful experiences I had for not saying no at the right time. <laughs> yeah. And all the aftermath I had to deal with. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Pain, pain is definitely a good teacher. And, and I, mm -hmm. I, have, yeah, I have a feeling there were there was some shared experiences of pain. <laughs> but, but that's very interesting. Uh, do, how, how do you think about, I guess, those expectations in general like do you think uh that they were positive do you think that they were negative like in the sense that oh if in a sense if they expect you to be a good person in 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 whatever way that is uh, okay maybe like it it helps you but then it's like oh i expect you to be like this it's like oh but i'm i'm something else i'm someone else like so it's like uh, what do you think were the good parts of that shaping or the bad parts of of that shaping First, there are absolutely two parts, both positive and negative parts. Mm. And uh, I think the general thumb of rules of life they gave me are correct by normal standard, the standards. For example, you have to be, uh, what do you call it? Just a good person. <laughs> yeah. Being honest, being hardworking, being responsible, being dependable, things like those. Mm. Um, those are all the positive parts. And I trust their life wisdom since they've been in this world much longer than I have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and... For the negative parts, both of them have always been living in a small city in China. So their world, their experience is limited in that environment. And mm. anything that never happened there, they don't know how to deal with. And they will extrapolate 
from their exi existing experience and then come up with a solution. For example, my father used to believe that being good in academics is everything. So <laughs> getting a PhD is a must. <laughs> and that was my first war with him because I quit my PhD. <laughs> Oh wow! Uh, that's and 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 I'd love to get into that uh, story later. But it's just like, um, yeah, it's so fascinating. Uh, I uh, I I used to have a. I, I feel like it's almost like it's it's kind of crazy because you're telling me a story from a very Chinese experience. But I feel it's like so true of all the friends that I saw around me, kind of growing up in India. Uh, maybe not as much the PhD, but academics was like, oh, you have to be good at, at academics. Yeah. And 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 there's this like weird joke uh, where it was like everybody kind of became somebody became a journalist, somebody became a dancer, but everybody first did academics, and mm -hmm. then they were like, okay, I hate this, let me do something else. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's this weird thing. the The next thing I kind of wanted to dig into a little bit was like, so just like to kind of close this up a little bit. Uh, it's this weird thing where sometimes you feel like, oh, like maybe I should listen to my parents. Uh, and then it turns out that, hey, like that's completely wrong. And sometimes you're like, hey, they are completely talking bullshit. Like that's obviously not true. And you completely strongly believe in it. And you're like maybe 16 or 20 or something. And then 10 years later, you're like, oh, I hate it that they were correct. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 did you have uh either or both of those experiences and do you have any like uh e examples of that in your life i must have both but it's hard to come up with examples but regardless i would think that no matter if it's good experience or bad experience mm. And no matter what kind of advice they gave me, if I decided not to listen, that's um detour I had to take in my life. Mm -hmm. So I take the cost, I take the responsibility, and I don't see it's a, a pure negative experience. Yeah. And, and I think that's such a... And I don't hate them for being right. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's great. I think that's such a wonderful and slightly poignant thing to also say, right? Because I feel like a lot of uh, people I see who, I mean, uh, I mean, in some of these cases, they have like slightly difficult relationships with their parents. But I feel like they just kind of keep uh, like some of that angst for a very long time. And it's like, it doesn't uh, do any good in the long run. But I think it's just a, such a poignant thing to say that uh, you know what, like, it's okay. Like, uh, they gave their advice, but ultimately I made my choice and it's, it's up to yeah. me sort of a thing. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's fascinating. How was that, uh, quitting PhD, uh, ex experience? Like, uh, what, what, what first word, what, what was it that led to you quitting your PhD? <laughs> Um, this was a rather painful experience and I tend to hide from. <laughs> hey, I mean, this is cheaper than therapy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually didn't spend a lot of time making the decision. Which was interesting looking back. Hmm. I was very, I wouldn't say spontaneous, I just followed the hunch. I didn't feel it's right. Hmm. And I still don't know if I made the right choice, or maybe there is no right or wrong choice. I just decided the path this way, and we'll see where it leads me. Hmm. That's so uh, allow me to say that I feel like that's a very courageous thing to do. 
Um, or I, stupid. I think, it could be, but I think it. I I I think that it's it, it's still quite courageous to do something stupid, right? It's it's not necessarily like I, I mean I'm not even saying that it's stupid. I don't think it is because first of all I think uh, you ended up doing pretty well. <laughs> uh, you're you're doing some pretty incredible work, some difficult work uh, in a place where uh, probably there are millions of people who would love to be, but. Uh, so so obviously it didn't turn out badly i mean there's no way to know the counterfactual maybe you could have done even better or even worse but you obviously ended up doing well but i feel like uh, this there's a lot of courage required to take that decision though and i almost feel like you're under, underestimating that because uh when you drop a phd that's like saying that hey i've done something for two or three years and i'm going to like not do that anymore because I feel like humans are so wired to have a sunk cost fallacy, right? That, uh, hey, just because I've, I'm in this terrible relationship for the last five years, I will continue to be in that because like, you know, now I've already done that for five years or something like that. So I, I feel like it's Maybe a very... Because I quit it only after one and a half years, so the sunk cost <laughs> wasn't so huge. One and a half years <laughs> is a long time. It is not that short. <laughs> Still easier. Still easier. Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, so one one of the things I've always like uh, felt about you, and I've also told you, is that, uh, and I think this is again goes back a little to this Indian Chinese raising thing, where it's like if 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 you feel like the credit you deserve is if the credit you probably deserve is X, you'll probably say that I deserve like X by five or something. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am, I'm saying that hey, this is like a brief thing, and you're like. No, 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 no. I'm just dividing that by like, you know, in one third or something. <laughs> okay. By the way, if my professor is watching this, I will say, I'm sorry. I still feel this way. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> you're, 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 you're so nice. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I'm sure your professor is happy knowing that uh, you're doing pretty well. Oh, by the way, professor... Sir, um, she she's my teammate, and she's she's like an absolutely like kick-ass engineer, and she's doing some awesome work. So you know, thanks thanks to her leaving you for your PhD, we got a very good teammate, and like she's working on stuff that's used by like I don't know maybe like a million people or something. So it's it's it's, it's all good. <laughs> um, so just just one last thing I wanted to kind of talk about that PhD. Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring it up is, I imagine uh, uh, it's during that PhD that you you had a colleague, or maybe not that PhD, but like one of the very wise things that you uh, said to me. And I think this is kind of one of those like features of our friendship and features of you that you'll be like very normally speaking, and suddenly like every like you know very. Uh, randomly you'll drop this like nugget of wisdom in like a very nonchalant way like it's like as if you're like just talking about like hey I'm going to get tea but like one of the (laughs) things you mentioned to me was uh, you know there's this like kind of scientist who's currently at MIT and he's like a very famous scientist and uh, uh, and we were doing some work that I think involved some uh, some reference to him and he was like oh yeah yeah, I went to college with him and uh, and we were kind of talking about it and you were like, yeah, you know, but like, I kind of, when I was like, were, like saw him and all that a little bit, I realized that, okay, you know, like I'm good, but it's okay. I, I, I'm i not that good and that's fine, but I'll still do well. And, uh, and there was this whole thing, right. And, and this is despite like you went to brilliant schools and all of this, right. And you just like seem to like accept that, Hey, you know, there are like a few folks who are going to be better and you were like kind of chill about it. Uh, And I felt that that was very wise because like, even if you become like the top 10% or the top 1%, there's always going to be like a 1% who's like better than you. And I personally feel like I still have like a lot of ego about it and like, I can't digest it. And I think like, it's, uh, it's not a source of comfort or happiness, but I felt like you were somehow able to, in your life, like, just do great stuff, be like near the best, but also if somebody is better, it's like, it's fine. Like, 
I felt like there was a certain amount of calmness and wisdom in that that I personally haven't ever been able to achieve in life. Like, how, how do you manage to do it? <laughs> mm, because the gap is so huge that I can never <laughs> feel. So I just give up. And I focus on my own happiness. For example, looking at Jeff. <laughs> then I just say, okay, fine. Jeff is Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff. Jeff is indeed Jeff. Uh, but yeah, to talk a little bit more on that topic, I didn't become like this on day one, and I was raised and I I went to a very competitive school. Um, I think I was forced to be competitive in that environment, mm. and. Also, because that competitiveness is all about grades, and grade is something you throw time in and you will get better return. Hmm. So I, I would say I did okay in that competition, which kind of reinforced me to continue to live in that in that mindset of comparing myself to others. And later, after graduation. When I was out of that environment, I tend to reflect on whether this has made me better or worse. And most of the part, I don't feel it's make, making me better. So I decided to drop the idea of constantly competing and then trying to win. It's just so tiring, so taxing. No, I mean it's just like. I think it's just like the most like classic Yunlu thing. Like you literally talked about changing your psychology dramatically to a more healthy state, as if you put on shoelaces. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> good. Yeah, it's not something that. Um, it's it's just the normal graduate gradual transition that I don't feel very. Phenomenal. <laughs> okay. No, I think that's amazing. I I, I think that's uh, genuinely amazing. I almost feel like I was telling you that hey, this is cheaper uh, than therapy, and I feel like I'm getting reverse therapy now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there is another reason that I try to talk myself into that if you want to compare something, you have to have a metric or a standard. And how do you come up with with a metric? And what do you measure? There is no clear answer, so I just give up. It's too complicated. I don't. I cannot come up with a system that can fairly compare to person. Actually, that's incredibly wise. I never thought about it. <laughs> that's that's a wonderful way to look at it. That's that's just profound. So basically, you're saying that when we compare ourselves, we are not comparing ourselves on the right metric. And if you actually try to find a metric to compare to people, you can actually never find that metric. Yeah. <laughs> Hence, it's pointless. That's genius. You Thank should write you. self-help books. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but but that is very fascinating, and and thanks a lot for sharing that because I almost feel like uh, like you know like you I, I'm not I don't know the name of the school that you went to, but I'm pretty sure that was probably like the you know, like the IIT of China or something, uh, and uh, and I guess uh, like my partner is like that, uh, or at least like she was also like similarly into academics. I wasn't, and I meet a bunch of these people, and I feel like uh, I, I feel like almost that uh, when I uh, notice this in in these like uh, Google like environments, I. Uh, it's it's not something that I am am used to, but uh, it's interesting that uh, you were able to take that experience uh, and and have like a very uh, well thought out approach to thinking about it. That's <laughs> that's very interesting. Um, now, taking a very quick uh, shift, uh, one of the things that I uh, really wanted to talk to you uh was about uh your relationship and i mean there are a lot of relationships and we'll talk about the other 
relationships uh, like uh, as well but i wanted to talk to you about uh, your your partner mm-hmm. and 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 how how that happened and how that went because it's it's so fascinating to me yeah to give some context to the uh, audience this is my first boyfriend who later became my husband <laughs> and we've been together for 13 years turning 14 <laughs> what percentage of your life is that like <laughs> Almost the half. Fifty <laughs> percent of your life. That's yeah. that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we met in high school. We were classmates, and I, I barely remember how that romantic relationship started. It was so natural, and still nothing um, eventful to to memorize. And we don't do celebration of anniversary or uh, anything like that because there is no such thing. <laughs> do, do you know your anniversary? Uh, for the day we registered, yes. <laughs> no, no, but like when you like met or started being boyfriend girlfriend. <laughs> A pretty vague memory. <laughs> that's 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 so that's so wonderful like uh, and and it's so fascinating like yeah just like, two particles in the world that attracts each other and then <laughs> attach to each other from then on and that uh, that's how i would put it but a lot of particles get attracted <laughs> but <laughs> but not all particles are able to stay attached i think <laughs> mm. Because we are lazy particles that <laughs> require a lot of energy to tear, tear apart. Both of us are. <laughs> that's, 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 that's such a funny, funny way to put it. But, but, but just, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing to me, these sorts of stories where it's kind of rare, where like somebody just met their partner in like high school and they were like, yeah, this is, this is the person. And like, how, how, how did that happen? Like, what, what was the initial thing like that caused you to be like, oh, yeah. And how did you realize that, oh, I have your boyfriend, girlfriend? Mm, first, I want to say something silly. Just possibility-wise, there will be such couples and you happen to know such a couple. <laughs> so it's nothing. It's still rare. Yeah, yeah, it is rare, but it is bound to happen. That's the statistics geek in you speaking. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I guess when I met him, I was in a state which was super obsessed with smart people. And he turned out to be one. (laughs) Very charming. (laughs) And personally, I, I think he's also a good looking guy. (laughs) <laughs> I, I i have met him and i can attest to that thank Go you <laughs> and that's enough for me <laughs> that's so cool so so what what part of what, what was it that uh that charmed you i'm sure all the single guys listening to this would be very interesting <laughs> interested in it <laughs> he's a perfectionist if he can score a hundred he wouldn't uh, be okay with the 99 which sometimes i like <laughs> <laughs> that's that 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 sometimes almost seems like uh su- such an interesting thing to say because it's like i really like it when you do that <laughs> but when you're like doing something that i don't like and i want you to do something else that's annoying <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got it right. Um, <laughs> uh, and he got a good sense of humor. Ah. He practiced the traditional Chinese talk show, which is, uh, I don't know how to translate that, that to English, just two person take turns to talk about mm. funny stuff. Oh, wow. Um, 
Yeah, I think that practice makes him a uh, an interesting guy. That's 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 very interesting. I didn't know that about him. Yeah. Wow. So so you really did get the full package, huh? Yeah, he, he's really into that. But I didn't know when I first knew, uh, first <laughs> met him. Smart, funny, and good looking. <laughs> yeah. What's more to ask for? Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I guess the only other thing that, like, I, I guess I'll try to get into is just, like, how did you, like, was there a time point that you knew that, hey, like, uh, yes, this is the person I want to be with? Like, how how, how did you, you come to that realization? Mm, for every moment I've been through so far, I felt like this is the person I want to be with. At the moment, so it just keeps going this way. <laughs> wow! And I don't think a lot about the future. I will let the future unfold itself, whatever it is. <laughs> You're so, just like, good, good. Sorry. So it's not like I think this is my lifelong partner. So I want to marry him. It's about I want to marry him now, so let's do it now. <laughs> wow, I mean, I just I'm a bit speechless. That's like such a you. I think you keep like dropping like like I said, very profound things in very like casual exchanges. So that's <laughs> so that's very interesting. Now, now to something spicy. Like, so who 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 asked whom out? Like, who 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 made the first move? I did. Really? Yes. That is very interesting. I want to hear this. <laughs> uh, you want to hear the story or why I did that? Uh, a book. <laughs> mm. So, um, I think I, I, or by Western uh, standard, I asked him out or I expressed the uh interest when we were in the third year of high school which was considered the most important year because that's when you took the college entrance exam mm. and uh, all the what do you call it the angel in your mind is telling you it's not the right thing to start a <laughs> romantic relationship now. Yeah, good timing. <laughs> the devil is saying, saying something different. <laughs> so I asked him something like, do you want to continue or do you want to pause this and wait until we finish the important thing? <laughs> and what did he and say? I he didn't. S- I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, that marked as our first day. Oh, wow. wow. So we just continue. That's, that's so interesting. So basically, you're saying that the devil set you on the right path and the angel was actually pushing you in the wrong direction. <laughs> Probably, yes. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's, that's super cute. That's so cool. Uh, that's that's fascinating. I think also like one of the things I've seen with you is like, uh, just like talking to you and some of the things that I've observed is that like you're like a super nice partner. Like uh, whenever like you'll be talking like and, and generally like, you know, like it's like it's a cliche thing, but like girls will be like, oh, my partner is like spending all of this time gaming and I like annoyed or whatever. <laughs> And whenever you say, yeah, he was like up till like 5 a.m. gaming or like coding or something like that. And I'm like, oh, so how, how are you taking it? You're like, you're not annoyed. They're like, no, it's okay. I mean, I just want him to, uh, you know, have fun and like do whatever his makes him happy. So I just tell him, uh, just do whatever makes you happy. Just don't like hurt yourself and take care of yourself. And that's like, wow, that's like I really am, understanding. How, how do you do that? Sometimes. Okay, sometimes. I want to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in general I'm just uncomfortable to demand something from someone else it's just very hard for me to do to 
either to ask someone to change for me or to do something for me. So I just let him be himself. Hmm. I also wanted to kind of, like in the beginning, you were telling me about your dad. I wanted to kind of uh, learn a little bit more about that because I think from what you've told me, he seems like a fascinating character and you told me about some cycling story that I would be interested in hearing. <laughs> oh my God. He's a judge, <laughs> by the way. So you can have a any stereotype of him. <laughs> He's a judge? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he he's the one who always has to make a call or make a decision and let people convince him and he's not the one who tries to convince so he's like a like the emperor of our family <laughs> <laughs> interesting interesting you know how to picture him now Yeah, I I'm picturing him with like judge clothes while riding a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's active. <laughs> so, so tell me the bicycle story. Uh since my dad uh, has already retired, so he has a bunch of time for different kind of activities and biking's um uh, I guess he's top hobby now and he can bike for 100 kilos per day that's that's amazing <laughs> that's that's yeah. like that's badass yeah he is <laughs> whenever he's into something he's really um very serious about it that's that's intense I, like i don't think i can uh, bike bike 100 kilometers today <laughs> in his 60s yeah, yeah that is very impressive <laughs> nice nice that's that's interesting so what what was your like relationship like what, what did you feel like you learned the most from him mm, being serious about the things you like or your work or uh even your hobby is definitely something i learned from him and there are also counter examples like try ah speaking of that my dad is someone who tries to it's not control but tries to make people change hmm. i wouldn't call him a control freak that's too much but still he's the opposite of me maybe that's how i turned this way <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that, that that's fascinating i think sometimes that happens as well right yeah that's that's so interesting and in yeah. our relationship he he has always been the one who taught me what to do taught me what's right hmm that's so did you rebel like quitting the phd thing i did rebel that was a <laughs> hard war to fight <laughs> but still <laughs> so how was that rebellion sort of experience like did did that change something it was so hard i wouldn't even able to talk to him straight i texted him about the whole thing that's how i managed to that sounds like a him. bad breakup <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand in the court confronting him. So yeah. I I have all the respect to all the lawyers who has been there. <laughs> <laughs> that's like oh that's such a funny thing to say. It's like he he he, he does this for a living. I'm, I I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's 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 so that's so fascinating. Uh, <laughs> and I'm glad the that love played a factor there and he was less strict to me than to his uh coworkers or <laughs> <laughs> the lawyers he had to deal with it is it's okay i think you 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 had a lot of cuteness points there though so yeah <laughs> can't do much about that <laughs> yeah uh, how how did he take when 
like did did you tell him you had like a boyfriend in high school like how how did you take to that he found it out himself how people are sharp or i guess i was very bad at hiding <laughs> <laughs> and i wasn't intentionally hiding either <laughs> interesting that's 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 interesting. how did he react he was pretty calm and chill that's and i even took my boyfriend to my uh to my house or to my family when we were in the first year of college oh wow that's really cool yeah it was pretty just everything was pretty chill that's pretty nice so so they like approved of your partner like right away <laughs> there wasn't any approval required because they didn't think he's going to be my husband and we were so <laughs> young at that time so it was just a boyfriend so what <laughs> That's that's so interesting. Actually, I kind of wanted to understand that a little bit more because I feel like that is probably one respect in which, like, like uh, India and China do differ quite a bit. Because I feel like, uh, I mean, uh, it's it it would be like a very very rare family in India uh, that when we were growing up, and I mean, I know I was growing up a little bit before you, but, <laughs> but it would be a very rare family that would be okay with. Uh, like a boyfriend girlfriend situation or like bringing your boyfriend home for a girl in first first year would be like unimaginable like even in like a lot of families today so what is like china like in that sense is it like conservative about relationships less conservative conservative about sex less conservative like how how's the thing i do know a lot of people who are a lot more conservative than my parents and i thank them for them being so open especially to my relationship during the last year of high school which was like a forbidden thing for others oh that's <laughs> that's really cool actually i think that's amazing yeah they are they're special in this way i guess no for sure i think it's really cool like uh, but but is but like how, how is that in china in china like is are our parents typically okay with like dating in like high school and college or is no, that like no. oh. your oh, first so. priority in high school is your college ent- entrance exam anything that's potentially harmful to that is forbidden and romantic relationship is generally generally considered harmful so it's not okay hmm. at least at my time maybe it's not like that now But, but, but that's such a different angle though because i feel like in india romantic relationships are not okay because at least like most families are like just romantic relationships are not okay period parents okay. typically <laughs> just want you to like grow old and they like find somebody for you and you like get married and then that's the one person etc there's like now there is more of a dating culture in like my generation uh but but in parents like used to typically frown about it uh, but uh, but that's interesting that in in china it's more like dating is not a problem it should affect studies <laughs> yeah that's true that's, that's that's very interesting but like were they okay with like you and your partner living together and stuff like that initially there was strong objection okay. <laughs> when we first came to the us So we lived in, lived in the same house but different rooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we came to the middle ground. <laughs> it's 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 so funny these sorts of um kind of negotiations with parents where it's almost yeah. like <laughs> we've created a fake boundary <laughs> that nobody can cross obviously. <laughs> And there was other roommates too so maybe that's how it worked out. Okay, I, I'm sure you two were always in separate rooms. You just never, <laughs> never change rooms at all. <laughs> of course. Very. I mean, of course, you're a, you're a very obedient child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so one of the things I want to jump to is like, uh, just how was moving to the US like? Like, uh, what made you do it? And how my did... dad made me do it initially, like always. <laughs> He had the idea of having me to go abroad studying when I was first born, I guess. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that is deeply rooted in his mind somehow, and he believed very strongly in that. And I, I was grateful. Interesting. Because I, I think seeing something different is always fun, no matter where you end up. Hmm. That's interesting. So, like, if you were to let's say now, if you had the ability to maybe construct like a third culture, like, what of U.S. cultural aspects would you bring to China, and what of what China cultural aspects would you think would benefit U.S. Wow, this is too big. <laughs> I mean, you can just riff on it. <laughs> I really appreciate how in the U.S. you're allowed to be different. You don't have to be the same as others, as others to feel safe. Mm. This is not the case in China. Mm. You're different, so you're wrong. It's <laughs> such a natural logic. Yeah. No, I, 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 I that, that makes complete sense, and I, and I feel the similarity with India as well. And uh, vice versa. I really like the family bounding idea in Chinese culture. Maybe there are historical reasons, but. For example, I feel the strong responsibility of taking care of my parents' senior life, and I feel the bonding is much weaker here. From a lot of stories I heard from friends, I'm not saying which one is better, but I just feel more comfortable to take on the responsibility instead of dropping it.、Mm. No, I、uh, I think that makes sense. I think they're both、uh, great points, and actually points that I completely agree with. I feel like、uh, uh, India is similar, in fact,、uh, where、uh, it's harder to be different. But I guess there's just a lot of different groups where it's harder to be different in that group. <laughs>、uh, but with a lot of different groups, but within that group, I think、uh, I, I I feel like. Uh, it's just uh, both both India and China cultures where, like I guess, community is more celebrated than the individual.、Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and and here it's a bit different.、Uh, but yeah, it's fascinating, and I and I also agree with the、uh, family bonding thing. I feel like uh, uh, that's that's generally it's, it's 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 sometimes it can be a suffocating thing, but it's also a powerful thing. It's this weird.、Mm-hmm. Sort of, sort of, sort of thing.、Uh, do you do you like feel like there were like any challenges when to when you moved to the US? Like it was like completely different, right? Yes, <laughs> full of challenges. <laughs> to talk about a few,、mm. asking stupid question. Bravely is something I learned here. I didn't feel allowed to do that when I was in China because I was surrounded by so many smart、uh, kids. Oh, in the U.S., people are stupid, so you can find it.、That's、no,、something. it's not like that. <laughs> uh, uh, let me think about how to phrase this. Just、uh, the tolerance of. Making mistakes is so different between U.S. and China, and here it's okay, and no, no one is going to judge you for the silly mistakes you make, and people even encourage you to learn from those mistakes.、Mm-hmm. But in China, I don't feel this way.、Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not a systematic thing, but personally, I don't feel this way.、Mm-hmm. No, I I think that's that's a very,、uh, I think that's a very valid observation, and I and I completely agree. Actually, I think、uh, it's I guess it's just one of those things where I feel like、uh, in the U.S. it's like、uh, 
you know if if like the parents will typically tell their child that speak up right like what mm-hmm. is bothering you uh, express it uh, whereas yeah. like kind of the message that we got was oh there are elders in the room like shut up don't 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 uh, speak too much right like, yeah so uh, i i think that's that's definitely true and i think that ultimately lets people here become smarter my earlier comment was just jokey by the way <laughs> <laughs> somebody's going to be on youtube how dare you do this so no <laughs> yeah and also i have to say in chinese culture there is a notion of the beauty lies in the implicit things you don't make things explicit they just destroys the the charm of it but it's not the case in the us people just make everything so so straightforward mm-hmm. it's a, a different kind of beauty i guess mm-hmm. but it started as a challenge for me <laughs> yeah i think the way uh, it's it's kind of interesting eh? the way i think different cultures like see art and perceive it and uh, how you want to be expressive about it or how you not don't how you think and there's like other connotations around things being sacred and how they affect beauty and yeah <laughs> it kind of affects i guess culture at like a slightly deep level right mhm um that's 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 so interesting so uh so let's do like uh, maybe some fun things uh i like fun things uh <laughs> what are uh, what are the what what sort of since we're all also talking about beauty and art like um what are uh, this what's the sort of art that uh moved you the most like what what form of art do you love uh, the most any kind of music interesting and i'm and... not very receptive to visual art I'm super bad at drawing and I don't get the meaning of a drawing very easily. Mhm. But music definitely moves me a lot. So I I joke about myself being a maybe a LSTM <laughs> instead of <laughs> Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> um for 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 the listeners who are not also machine learning and computer scientists uh, lstms are a form of uh, neural network that is often used for audio processing and voice recognition and things like that but yeah just for sequential instead of visual data yeah uh yeah <laughs> that, that's hilarious sequential data i mean yeah but uh, but kind of speaking of that like so 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 what so what would be i think some of the artists uh, or like uh, music that you think moved you the most and that would be like great recommendations for somebody uh... it's so hard because at different times i have different favorites <laughs> that's okay you don't have to like do like remember each one of them just like think of maybe a couple or a few that you think like really moved you and like shaped you uh John Lennon for mm-hmm. example imagine mm-hmm. I share the same hope as him like there is no country nothing to die for That's beautiful uh, Yeah Um I also fell in love with Billie Eilish She's just so talented, so young, and I was amazed. I feel useless sometimes because of her. <laughs> like you basically started with teaching me do not compare, and then you are like, "Oh, I felt useless." <laughs> For a second. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, and I recently uh, fell in love with a composer cut. Called- Gabriel Fauré. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. He's a French composer, and I learned about his music from a fav- from my TV uh, my, my my favorite TV show, which is Better Call Saul. And the music was just so beautiful, nice. tied to that scene. Nice. Oh, that's great. Um, 
So it's just different at different times, and I'm pretty open to all kinds of music, even electric music or rap music. That's awesome. That's awesome. No, I I I I I one hundred percent agree. I think uh, the different genres of music, like uh, you, you should be open to all of them, and then you can learn so yes. much and feel so much from yes. all of them. Yeah. Uh, do you do you have any like uh, books that you felt that like really shaped you or moved you? Mm. I don't think I can give a comprehensive answer at the moment because I only remember the few books I read recently. <laughs> you don't have to be comprehensive. You just have to. I mean, I think the, the the goal is not to like get like some recommendation. I think the goal is more to hear like uh, just maybe some book that you read and how that affected you and that that you uh, think think was meaningful. I recently read a book about the investment, which I liked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it just taught me to do something I failed to do for a long time. Which which book was this? Simple Path to Wealth by J. L. Collins. Interesting. How 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 long is the book? Maybe I should read it as well. <laughs> it was a very quick read. Like I I think I spent a, a night on it. Okay. And I finished it. That's that's, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I can only go. Uh, back in time, I cannot think of the most important things. Like, I I can only go in time order, not uh, importance order. No, no, time order is totally fine. I actually think that uh, I think that's really important uh, as well. I think one of the travesties of our schooling system is that nobody understands uh, basic uh, investment and finances, me included. <laughs> uh, yeah, it so, should be taught in school. Yeah, I wish it was. Yeah, I mean, I think we can have another whole podcast about all the crap that they taught in school that they shouldn't have taught us, and all the things that basic things that they should have taught us in school. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I also recall the few books I read that George Orwell wrote, like the Animal Farm. Oh, Is nice. Is that a correct English? Name? Yeah, no, that, that's because that's, I read that's it in Chinese. Oh no, that's that's the correct name. Did you like it? I loved it a lot, and. It was so cynic. <laughs> Maybe too cynic, but still, I love it. <laughs> when did you read it? When the pandemic just hurt, uh, just did. When I was so disappointed in the government, and it was just the right book to read at that time. <laughs> okay, interesting. I actually haven't read it, but I'm almost. I haven't read it because I feel like I'll be like, it's just, it'll be like reading my fears. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and also the other one I forgot the name, a longer a longer book. Nineteen eighty four, is that nineteen eighty four? Yeah, nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're they're all, uh, they're all really great books. But hey, like, uh, one of the things I guess, like, kind of, uh, you know, just uh, I guess kind of going back. I I think it's been a while. I'll, I I promise I won't like hold you for too much longer. But uh, I think kind of going back to I guess the uh, original thing I said was that for somebody who doesn't know you, you have like a very like warm personality, very nice, uh, you know, somewhat demure exterior. But as anybody who's like kind of known you for a while, you also have like a very sharp wit. Which uh, you very well use it against me <laughs> every once in a while, uh, and like there are these like cra like by the way anybody looking at her you wouldn't think to know it, but she has all of these like crazy burns that she dishes out to me every uh, once once in a I while. I only use it against close friends who is <laughs> acceptable of those. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but. Uh, but do you think that this is just something that I notice, or is just is it actually like a way you are that that's true? Um, 
It is the way I am, but I tend to use it a lot less these days. I, I think the way I show closeness or love to a friend is to be harsh on him or her somehow. <laughs> Yeah, and that's it has, true. It has worked against me in the past. That's why I tend to yeah do it less now. That's interesting. It's weird. <laughs> uh, no, I I think that's 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 really cool. Thanks. I'm, I feel I trust me. I'm honored. Uh, but also, yeah, I mean, like, who are you going to like be harsh to? But not your friends. Like, you're not mm-hmm. going to be harsh to a stranger. Mm-hmm. Definitely, uh, but but yeah. Um, how how do you think about uh, feminism? Like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm still learning what it is, what it's trying to achieve. I don't know enough about its history, and I also have to admit I've seen some malformed feminism in the past as well which received strong objections from men or even women sometimes. So I have to say I'm pretty new to it, still learning. Interesting. Hmm. Did did you, have there been like uh, situations in your life where you felt like, hey, like, this is kind of unfair, like, uh, or like, uh, felt like, oh no, like, you know, this is how it should be, or like felt uh, the the need for it, or, because, um, yeah. Mm. It's pretty hard to me for, to say something is unfair because I don't know what is fair. I don't have a um, good definition of fairness in different scenarios. So I try to see it in a different angle of, uh, in my opinion, how could it be better? But it's just my opinion. I don't know how widely this is applicable and I don't know whether I can promote my idea and do concrete things Mm. to make things change towards my ideals. Mm. Or you can say I tend to perceive than to judge. Again, you're dropping like wisdom as if you're like (laughs) dropping like some change. No, that's I think I think just that statement that you made uh, around I try to perceive and not to judge. I mean, I think if uh, most people in the world could even do a fraction more of that, I think that would be, I think that would be profound, actually. I think that would be like very, very good for the world. But I also didn't take any action and I blame myself for (laughs) uh, only thinking but not doing. Hmm. No, that's I interesting. I admire those people who are able to take actions and do concrete things because I'm hesitant most of the time. What are your biggest insecurities? Mm, right now, I guess... Having to take care of my parents, my husband's parents, and our kids at the same time in our 40s. That responsibility is my biggest insecurity now. I don't know how to deal with it. (laughs) We are both the single child of our families, so I can imagine a lot of work. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, just the fact that I think you think about it, you'll be fine. And, uh, and I'm uh, 100% sure you'll be both great. I mean, you're already a great daughter, uh, but I think you'll be a great mom as well. Uh, 
So I think you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and by the way, I don't have a kid at the moment, so that's a imaginary question. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what would you, if if you were to kind of go back and like give some advice to like your younger self, what would that be? Wow. Maybe I bet my younger self wouldn't listen to anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is probably very true. <laughs> so maybe I'll just say, do whatever you want, make all the mistake you have to make. <laughs> and that's good advice. I think that's that's really good <laughs> advice. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay what what mistake uh do you like regret not having trying to make like bad relationships leading to nowhere <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is that is such a wonderful thing to say <laughs> <laughs> it's like I found the perfect relationship. I won the lottery when I was 16, but I have to do something stupid. I didn't get to all the other crappy relationships. I mean it. <laughs> no, I, I know you mean it. I, I, I agree. I think that's hilarious though, but that's just so cool. <laughs> have you asked your husband if he feels the same? Uh, he joked about it all the time. <laughs> of settling down too early <laughs> I don't know if it's a joke but we talked about it a lot. we both said it though for me yeah it's like I guess it's like even if you've had like the most nice like high quality food you still want to have some other types of <laughs> like yeah, mis- it's like oh this taste like is not that great <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh, that's 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 super interesting. Okay, uh, do you have any last words you want to share? I want to do this to you sometime. This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm really glad you had fun. Um, if if and, if I sorry, go ahead. And having someone who is willing to listen to your story is such a wonderful thing. And thank you so much. The, the 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 pleasure is all mine uh the story was wonderful and even though i felt like i knew a little bit about your life i felt like i got to learn a lot more and i feel closer to you and and it was amazing and i feel like uh there are a bunch of like these philosophical wisdoms that you've dropped that i'll have to go and revisit and <laughs> And also, I think it was just like, uh, funnily enough, I feel like it's one of those things where in an odd sense, you know, it's like you try to heal a part of someone and you heal yourself. It's in this weird yeah. sense that I uh, talk to you and like, I somehow feel like, oh, this thing that I've been thinking about that I wasn't able to figure out, I feel better about that now. But also, actually, I wanted to thank you, uh, obviously, for taking the time, but also much much more for being vulnerable and actually sharing your story with me uh i think uh i think that is something that is very uh, sacred and very treasured and i really appreciate that but i also appreciate that <laughs> sorry i said accept it and i also want to thank you that uh, when i was going through a difficult time and when i was going through uh, a breakup or like we've had we've uh, shared uh, these things uh, uh, you were very very kind and you were very very non-judgmental and you were such a good friend uh, thank so you thank you as well <laughs> <laughs>